Sometimes Rooney will fire me in a message. Wayne Rooney against Jake Paul at Old Trafford. Wow. Right? And that, that's, that's the one, goes, isn't it? Wow. Can I show you how much he got paid last night? And it was about three times what she got. Do you think that's fair? Can I throw a name in it? Derek Chisora. Lunatic. <laughs> <laughs> Still calls me Silver Spoon Kid to this day. So does everyone else. Yeah, I know. Yeah. <laughs> well, I told him, I turned it cold. What do you want me to do? <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck is that? Just so it's like... Hey, what's this? I'm, I'm looking. Look, it's a bit of product placement. Someone says, "Yeah, that off-white's really good," and he's just taken anything off. Joe, off I might go and get. I, I might go and get my black <laughs> jumper out. I'm going to get my. Black <laughs> <laughs> I lost my confidence. <laughs> Don't take off, Carrie. I spoke to my daughter this morning. It's her birthday, and all she wants is off white. Off white, exactly. Fucking walk now. The trendy kid. He calls that an overshirt. That's his new one. It's a shacket. It's a shacket. It's a shacket. It's a shacket. No, that's yours, Ed. That's yours. Jill, really. Look at. I told you, Jill. You look amazing. Doesn't he a jumper? That's a nice... Uh, of course it is, I've got it on. I, I don't wear shit. He's relaxed now and then he'll go, yeah. right, OK, <laughs> stick to football. Right, here we are. I'm with my dad. Ian. Ian Wright, Roy Keane. Yeah. <laughs> you know? yeah. Right, let's go, ready? On today's episode of Stick to Football, brought to you by Sky, but we're joined by a very special guest, a man who's made an incredible mark in the world of boxing, sport and entertainment. The managing director of Matchroom Sport, Eddie Hearn. Eddie, thank you for joining us on Stick to Football, and obviously it's the departure for us from sticking to football. What's just talked about being a boxing promoter? I know we know what obviously happens. You set up some of the biggest fights in the world, but tell us what a day-to-day -day looks like in your week. Um, it's just selling, you know, almost like a used car dealer, right. really, like all over the country. Now we, the business is global, so we're in America, we're in Japan, we're in the Middle East, we're in Australia, Italy, Spain. So it's literally week to week, show to show, like a travelling, you know, travelling show around the world. And uh, boxing's become massive for us. It's been a huge part of our life, and yeah, every every week now there's there's a show worldwide. I, I always think that when obviously I've seen you box, I think of quality, obviously shows. But it seems to me there's quantity as well there. You must be everywhere all the time. Yeah, we've, you know, we looked at businesses like the UFC over time and, mm. and WWE and wanted to kind of have that international brand, that presence. So everywhere we went, they knew we were in town. So, you know, there's a big, you know, we've got 40 employees within boxing that travel all around the world, show to show, territory to territory. And, you know, it's become a major part of our business, like snooker and darts mm. and, you know, you, you know, Obviously, matchroom four as well, but boxing's always been my passion since since an early age. It, it always gets through at you about obviously your dad was involved in that, and you seem to take over. But how, how did that was, was that always going to happen? You know, obviously you're in, in from a youngster in and around boxers. How, yeah, I never really wanted, was it always something you spoke about that. It was yeah, I never really wanted to be a promoter. I never when it, when I was you know at home and he was on the phone to Don King and Bob Arum and Frank Warren. You know the same people that I'm competitors with now. I never looked at him and went, I want to I wanna do that. You know, as a kid, all you want to do is play sport. Mm -hmm. You want you want to be a sportsman. Mm -hmm. But, you know, he always said to me that if you're not good enough, which I wasn't, the next best thing is working in sports. Mm -hmm. yeah. So I never really wanted to work for him because growing up it was just like, what well, do you need to, you know, you're, back, you're Eddie's barrier and son, you mm -hmm. don't need to work, you're going to work. So I went away for five or six years and, and worked in sports management myself. I represented golfers on the PGA Tour. European tour, travelled all around America on the golf circuit. But then kind of eventually just felt like it was almost like a responsibility mm. to, to follow his legacy in sport. And boxing was not really something, it was, it was my biggest passion, but I saw the, the aggravation it gave him. I mean, you know, I would sit in his study at night waiting for him to finish his calls and he would just be like, Fuck, row, you know, rowing <laughs> with everybody. Because as a business, it's horrendous. Now you've got the world of social media, it's even worse. So there's a lot you of love aggravation. social media. I do, I do, but it's, it's frustrating. You're the most meme man in the world. Yeah, I know. Brilliant that's memes, though. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> and, and what about with the, um, you know, with the fight? You want to see great fights in the, um, in the, in the game, the boxing game, but what about the, these YouTube fights where they're putting these guys together and it's creating so much, like, so much interest, Ed. And, and you know, I'm looking at it, I'm thinking, I, I actually don't want to see you two fight, but I want to see you two fight. What's happening in the boxing world? in respect to what's going on with the YouTube. I think, I, I think it's a threat. 
You know, I think anything that is going to deliver numbers, you have mm. to you have to remember that the people that really make boxing happen and grow the sport, the broadcasters. As long as there's investment from the broadcasters, right. the sport will continue to flourish. But when there's something else that brings numbers, any broadcaster is going to look at it. They don't really care mm. that much or as passionately as us about the sport. Mm. They care about the numbers. Is it dangerous though, Ed? Is it I don't think it's dangerous because I don't think any of them are dangerous enough. Right. Do you know what I mean? So right. like when you've got two people that can't fight, you know, I think we're going to come to your clip shortly. <laughs> <laughs> Like, do you know what I'm saying? Though? You know, like when you, yes. well, I haven't seen your fight yet, but it tastes like, like you can't really hurt each other, exactly. can you? Like you, exactly. you might get a bit tired, <laughs> yes. but Tommy you're not going to take a head. Tommy Fury not fight? Is that what you're he saying? He was a, prof I mean, he is a professional boxer, but he's terrible. <laughs> so like he's he's absolutely swum the channel. I mean, he's gone from making I don't know. 40, 50 grand a fight to making three, four, five million a wow. fight oh. to fight a YouTuber. What do professional boxers think about mm. YouTube boxers? Because I remember a freestyle footballer getting more minutes than me in a charity mm. game. <laughs> and I was absolutely human. <laughs> and I'm trying to like play the game, like yeah. switch the play and they're doing flicks and tricks. Yeah. And like, what do the boxers think? I think the ones think? that sort of understand the bigger picture and, and, you know, the marketing side of sport get it. A lot of, are very unhappy about it. You know, they feel that you know, I've worked all my life. I've yeah. been boxing yeah. since I was six. Yeah. As far as I'm concerned, tough shit, really. Like it doesn't work like that. This guy has built his profile and his business and his following to a point where he has actually earned the right to do whatever he wants. So I don't, I don't agree with the whole "it's not fair, it's taking opportunities yeah. away from boxers." I like to say, put it over there. It's an entertainment format. We're keeping the sport great over here. I've done one, you know, I did KSI against Logan Paul right. in Los Angeles. We made a fortune. You mentioned the broadcasters before. I mean, that takes me to who's actually made the worst move. Mm. You going from Sky to the zone or him going to Valencia? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I don't know about his bank, ba bank ba balance, but ours <laughs> worked out all right. Look at his shirt. He's got an off-white shirt. Yeah, I'm not doing all right. Yeah, I mean, our vision was global. So the zone is like the first yeah. ever global destination. Yeah. And we see a future in streaming. You know, you only have to look at the way kids interact you know, and digest content now. Mm. You know, they watch Netflix, they watch YouTube, and, and, and they have to, and obviously the way that, you know, Sky are marketing and, and they're streaming and glass and stuff like that, they're keeping up with the times as well. Things are changing uh, in terms of how people are watching. You, you, and, you know, streaming's important. I want to ask about, like, um, Anthony Joshua and his career and what's going on and how... You know, I want to ask you, um, Ed, is that when you're sitting there in that, that Ruiz fight, you know, when you're your prize asset, mm. all of a sudden, bam, gets knocked out. What, what, what you, what's I know it sounds cheesy, but like, it's more at that point with someone like AJ. It's more mm. like of a personal relationship. Right. And, you know, he's, we signed him when he won the Olympics and we took him from the professional mm. debut to where he is now. And the journey's been, it's been life changing for me, the business, mm. him. So, like, that was more like just crushed. I mean, yeah. I remember it was Madison Square Garden. We'd sold the whole thing out. Jarrell Miller, who he was originally fighting, you know, they had this big yes. beef at the press conference, massive, sold out immediately. Jarrell Miller fails like three drugs tests and then we need an opponent. So I'm looking around, I think, I want a credible opponent because we've sold out Madison yes. Square Garden. Yeah. Don King's phoned me up. He said, we've got this guy, Trevor Bryan. He's absolutely useless. It's a one round job, but he looks the part and I'll be there with my flags. And I'm thinking, I can't go with him. Mm. We'll get, so we'll go with Andy Ruiz. And Don King went, don't go with Andy oh, Ruiz. Geez. He looks terrible in his shorts and he can really fight. <laughs> and I, I was like, yeah, that's kind of like, you know, I want to do a fight. So we went in and AJ just, you know, dropped him. And then I remember that night as well, it was in Madison Square Garden. I thought, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to wear a tuxedo with a bow tie because like, it's my first ever show I'm promoting at Madison Square Garden. Mm. And obviously he ended up getting dropped five times. So I remember I, we had a driver outside take that hotel. I said, no, I'm just going to have a stroll. <coughs> Three miles through New York with the bow tie on, and I was just like taking it off, just sling things away. Take us back to where you were talking about your dad before, I mentioned you said it's horrendous, mm. boxing's horrendous. What do you mean by that, the business just, of boxing? Yeah, the, the thing is with boxing is there's no barriers to entry. So anybody who? in the whole business, mm. the entire business. It's not regulated at all from a point I mean, of promoters. it's regulated in terms of commissions, and but in terms of entering the business, it right. doesn't matter whether you're a member of the media, you can turn up at a press conference. Next thing, you've got a mic under mm. my face, Anthony Joshua's face. doesn't matter if you've got a few quid and you go, I like boxing, I'm a boxing fan. I'm going to start managing fighters. Mm. Yeah. You know, oh, I fancy myself as a promoter. Next thing, there's a new promoter that's 
pot jumped up on the scene, you know, and he used to run an insurance business. So you're dealing, it's like the Wild West, yeah. really. Then you deal, so as a promoter, you're dealing with a fighter, a trainer, a manager, an advisor, a lawyer, and often they'll be in the office saying, yeah, I don't think this guy's getting paid enough. He's worth this much. I'm saying, on what basis? Mm. You know, one, he don't send any tickets. Two, we've, we've seen the viewership, and but you, you can't sometimes argue with these people. Yeah. Plus, on the other side, you've got the competition who want you finished yeah. on a daily basis. So you're sleeping with one eye open, and the bigger you get, the more everybody comes against you, yeah. if you like. But that's the fun part, really. And that's what we did in England. I came in. You know, you had Frank Warren. You had Ricky Hatton. Mm. You had Frank Maloney at the time, now Kelly Maloney, Mick Hennessy, and all these people. And we, we just took over. You know, I said to Scar, I said, you've got to get rid of everyone. Because they used to share the dates between promoters. But everyone was just trying to shaft everyone all right. the time. It was a complete waste of time. So I went to Sky and said, you've got to get rid of everybody and give me all the dates. And they just said, no, we can't. We can't do that. Everyone, you know. I said, I'll show you what I'm going to do. Mm. We went out. We did Brooke against Hatton. We did... Carl Froch against Luce and Bouton, and we, we, we started putting boxing into big arenas again. They gave me all their dates. Yeah. And then we moved to America and we'd done the same thing. So we upset a lot of people. What gave you the confidence to do that, Ed? Um, just competition, really. Just wanted to win. Mm -hmm. you know? And I guess it was a little bit personal for the fact, you know, my old man was a Hall of Fame promoter, had all the biggest shows and walked away from boxing mm -hmm. because it was aggravation. And then thought, I'll just go into darts instead. It's a lot easier. We'll make a lot more money. <laughs> But it was kind of like the same people that he was competing against when I was growing up were still there. And I just thought, yeah. that's fun. Yeah. Well, you thought about putting those, those fights on, and listen, it, it, it was fantastic, some of the, the shows that you put on, but for someone like ourselves who just like watching probably the biggest, biggest fights, mm. why, doesn't, why, why isn't the AJ Fury? Why, why are those fights not happening? Because that is really frustrating as, as a boxing fan that it doesn't happen, and you're right in the heart of that. I think when you talk about that fight specifically, I think there's a few different reasons. Number one is um, Fury is, you know, he's an enigma, but he's also mad. He's quite up and down. He's going to do what he wants to mm. do. And secondly, you've got the broadcast situation. So AJ's with the Zone, uh, Fury's with BT, and before AJ was with Sky. And it's like, so everybody wants it exclusively on their channel. A Fury comes in, he says, I want 50 50, you know, when he wasn't the champion, then he wants 60 40 when he is the champion. And when the money's there, and, it, and two guys want the fight, nine times out of ten, it will happen. You know, you're seeing Fury Usyk now, apparently signed, and yeah. I think it will happen. It's quite straightforward in that sense. But is there a pride thing where you said, you know, someone wants 50-50, we were the champion, then he becomes the champion, he wants 60-40. When you're talking about the numbers involved, I mean, I know it's still a lot of money, but is there not a case that you think, if you want this fight to happen? Yeah, but boxing's different. You know, you're talking about two guys that, one, don't like each other, and two, about to go in the ring and have a fight. Mm -hmm. So I'll give you an example, you know, you would do a deal like Ben Eubank was a good example, yeah. you know, a fight that fell through, looks like it's going to happen. You know, 50-50 split, okay, eventually you get to that point. And then, then it's like, you know the argument's coming about who goes first, first on the yeah. poster, right? right? Is it Ben Eubank yeah. or is it Eubank Ben? And you're <laughs> like, now in your world, you're 100% right. Don't be daft, right? So Eubank says, it's Eubank Ben or there's no fight. I'm like, okay. I said, well, let's do Eubank Ben, but then Connor Ben will walk second to the ring. Right? Sensible, right? Mm -hmm. So I then have to go to Connor and go, it's going to be Eubank Ben. Why? <laughs> I said, good point, but it's just, let's not be silly. Yeah. Just give it to him. Oh, okay. I said, and I'll try and get you to walk second. Mm. Great advantage. Leave him standing in the ring, mm. you know, et cetera, et cetera. Right, okay. All right, I'll do it. Go back to Eubank. It can be you, Bank Ben, but you've got to walk first. No, I'm walking second. Otherwise, there's no fight. God. And it's like... Can you not so, just toss a coin? Yeah, but that, that's the, the whole We do that, we do that sometimes. But, we said that to you, Bank, and he went, no. He went, I'm walking second, or there's no fight. But then it becomes a pride thing and an ego thing. And fighters, you know, they are prepared to walk away if they feel like they're being taken advantage of. It, just, it just feels like a nonsense to me that, yeah. <laughs> that fights can be stopped on this on and that. fans are missing out. And if, I know there's a, the Boxing Board of Controllers yeah. here. Or, is there someone above yourselves at the top, like a, an institution or whatever it may be? That Forces can, it through. That yeah. gets things done. Yeah, but I mean, ultimately, 
everybody has, is licensed by the British Boxing Board of Control. And sometimes they'll order fights. Sometimes you'll see a governing body say, right, we're ordering Mandatory. this Mandatory. fight. Mandatory. Yeah, but you still have to negotiate the fight. They still have to sign a contract. So there's still, you know, that negotiation process that has to go through. But that, that's just a very small example. You remember when we did like Frampton Quigg with Joe Gallagher and Shane McGuigan? Mm. You've got the fighters hate each other. Then you've got the trainers hate each other. And then you have me and Barry McGuigan, who hated each other at the time. <laughs> and it's like, we can't get anything done. The, pe the pettiness is unbelievable when you're thinking about it. It is, when you talk about fight sports. Let's show you a clip. <laughs> Roy, I did a, a dog Joshua. walk with you. Joshua or Fury? Oh, I don't like any of them. That heavyweight stuff has irritated me. <laughs> Too much talk. Joshua or Fury? None of them. They, they both irritate me. I'm not picking any of them. <laughs> 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 it's here. That's, that's why. Right. That's, that's the danger. You talk yeah, right yeah. about talk. That's because they're not fought each other. Yeah. I mean, is that what you yeah. mean? Yeah. But that is it's the danger. Yeah, but I think yeah. he's right. I mean, that is the danger of the public end up going. I've had enough. I've had enough. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? How difficult can it be? It seems to be it's called like, ego. You know, I can't like, imagine yeah. like it's it's a kid. Kate, sure. Sure. Kate, Kate, she is one of the most fierce people inside and outside of me. I mean, she scares the life out of me. I mean, she's your biggest fan. You're an absolute idol and hero. She is the most terrifying person. I've ever met in my life. That's I mean, why, because yeah, she's but... a <laughs> yeah. Where does she think she gets it from? But you know why, but you know why? Because she's so pleasant and all of a sudden, you know, I remember she said to me once, it's, it's a great story and it shows how far women's boxing's come. When she was on the rise and f the female talent was not getting anywhere near rewarded commercially in the same way, she fought in Boston and we turned up and she basically sold the whole place out. Wow. Wow. And she was fighting three from the end. And when she walked out, the place was absolutely... Well, there's a few Irish in Boston. I know, yeah, well, she yeah. sold all the tickets, yeah. right? Yeah. So, and they, afterwards, they all left. The next morning, we're at breakfast, and it was just me. And she comes over, she's very quiet, you know, sat down, she went, can I, can I talk to you a second? I thought, oh, well, well, yeah, no problem, Kate, sit down, you know. She said, um, can I ask you how much Tevin Farmer, he was on after, can I ask you how much he got paid last night? And it was about three times mm. what she got. With no one there? Yeah. Do you think that's fair? I'm just like... <laughs> you know, like <laughs> no. And I said, no. Was it many things? Yeah, and she said, because I think I sold all the tickets last night. Mm. And I think everyone tuned in to watch me. So how can I be getting so much less mm. than this guy? She's right. making up for it now, though. Yeah, oh, yeah, she's having, she's having a good time. Now. Do you know Katie Taylor? Just I met Katie uh, once. Uh, she came to an Irish match, but yeah. I spoke to Katie after she got she beaten. She play for the national team. That's team. right, yeah. yeah. I spoke to Katie after she got beaten. I think it was the Olympics, mm. and I just saw an interview where she was like, like really upset. Mm. So I got in touch with her. I said, listen, keep your spirits up. And that was it. We kind of mm. kept in touch. Mm. Oh. You know, the odd text here and yeah. there. But she came to an Irish match one night, and yeah, I met her, and uh, yeah, amazing what you've said about her, an amazing fighter. Mm. Mm. She's certainly doing Ireland proud, yeah, and that big fight's coming up. Yeah, yeah so. November 25th, mm. the rematch. I mean, it's yeah. like must win. You know, she's yeah. Yeah. she's in her mid 30s now, and yeah. you know, sometimes I say to her, I mean, how many fights have you got there? And she look at me again, like she's going to kill me. She's she just loves it. She's she's an amazing athlete. Yeah. Do, you, do you promote but, her? Yeah, I've done since her debut. I remember winning her seeing her win gold at London, and the mm. crowd and everything it was, was unbelievable. Crazy, yeah. And just out of respect, I said, look, I'll have a meeting, but I don't see a future for women's boxing. She came into my office, I was mesmerised. I mean, I've never met a more determined, I mean, I said to her, tell me the, you know, tell me the, the three important things in your life. She's like, boxing, God, and my family. Mm. And I'm like, right, and she said, and I will, I will change. I mean, when you think about what she did, female boxing was banned in Ireland, right? She was Kay Taylor in the competition, she was a boy. She was that to pretend she was a boy mm. to fight. She would walk into Bray Boxing Club, they'd tuck her ponytail into her head guard. She'd have to walk in with a head guard on to train and fight to yeah. pretend that she was a boy. She then started women everything and they, they allowed female boxing. Then she went to the IOC, the Olympic Committee, and said, You have to allow women's boxing in the Olympics. And they went, No, we're not we're not doing that. And she wouldn't stop. And in the end, the IOC went, look come and have an exhibition bout, bring one of your friends or something, mm. you know. So she bought the number two in the world. Wow. And they fought in front of the IOC. And the IOC went, oh my God, you're in. Right. So That's she actually that. got women's boxing into the Olympics as well. And what she's done is incredible. She, and, and she's quite, you know, she's, she keeps herself 
right, actually she hates, uh, she's turned down millions in, in endorsements, she don't want to do any interviews, because she's turned down the so overlap. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I shouldn't she do did. that, Gary. <laughs> you know, yeah. I bet she but, wasn't bothered who yeah. went on the poster yeah. first and but stuff she's like, like that. She made me a believer, and actually, Seeing what she's done, seeing that determination, has given us massive drive for women's boxing, which is now commercially viable in its own right. And I think that's the important thing with women's sport. I don't like the way that people sometimes use it to tick boxes. Like, oh, we cover women's sport. Yeah. It's got to work. Why is there always that thing going on, that sort of, you know, the, the boxers shortchanged or the promoters had them off for a few quid? It always feels like it's there. I think boxing. because it has existed a lot and I think it still exists. But how do they get away with it? Because I think, as I said, with the no barriers to entry, some people are running shows, some people don't put budgets together. If you actually look at the substance of the businesses of these other promoters. You know, I mean, we have a flowing in the company's house here, which is very nice. You can go and see all their accounts. Mm. They've got nothing. And it's just literally like, here we go, you know, we turn up to show. Underneath it, there's no substance. So it only takes one show to go wrong for these people, where they're in the hole. And have fight. you been there? No, no. I mean, my old man was. I mean, luckily enough, we've, you know, since we returned to boxing, we've just gone like that. And we've built a business that is sustainable under that kind of pressure if we have a bad night. And we lost a couple of million quid. We throw up for the next two weeks, but we carry on. So, you know, but fighters as well sometimes have a perception that you know they see the crowd, they see this. This show must be making a fortune. It doesn't always work like that. Let's just show you this clip. I interviewed Chris Eubank Jr. a few weeks ago. We actually didn't put this into the main interview, but I thought it was really interesting. Does boxing let boxers down? Yeah, I think it does. You know, there's no unions, there's no there's no financial advisors. Most the most of the financial people in boxing are taking from fighters. They're not trying to help them. They're trying to they're trying to yeah. what can I get for out of this guy? It's about, you know, the managers and the promoters and the people that are educated who are taking advantage of guys who never went to school. They've just been in the gym every day their whole lives. Mm. So they're great fighters, but they don't know how to spend money. They don't know about taxes. They don't know about investing yeah. in, in real things which can actually help them over time. So they get taken advantage of. It's happened throughout the history of boxing and it will keep happening. Can that change it? Yeah, I think it can. It all depends who you're working with. It's like, every, it's like everything in, in business and in sport. If you've got the right team around you and you've got good people around you, they'll look after you. If you haven't, and 90% of the people in boxing are probably out, you know, and I think he's right, what he says, but also don't forget, not everybody in boxing makes money in terms of fighter. Very few fighters lead the sport financially sound, and that, that for me is the greatest blessing to be able to see a fighter retire and actually be in a position where they're comfortable. The house is paid for. Mm. He could be talking yeah, about footballers there, couldn't he? Exactly we're, we're, we're walking, exactly. Yeah, most footballers and boxers exactly, are walking but, class backgrounds. Exactly. And, when, and they don't have that sometimes education. Yeah, yeah. Just to I me, mean, because I, I that was obviously from Chris Eubank Jr., but AJ, when I interviewed him, said something similar about setting up a union for boxers. What footballers do have is the contract, don't they? They have a protection around the contract and they have protections in the game around employment, whereas with boxers, mm. I don't think there's any protection right. whatsoever other than the fact they may select a lawyer, an advisor, yeah, I mean, that, a that's, promoter. That's down to the what, team. That, yeah. but anyway, why, why wouldn't you, with the prominence you have in the sport, why wouldn't you, with people like Eubank or um, AJ, set up a union for box that puts a level of protection in place? Because we have that in football. Yeah, I don't think that's. I don't think a promoter should set up that union. No, I, I, I get. I, should set but up I'd, that I'd union. almost advise them and sort of. Yeah, but also, you know, to. they'll also feel like, why is my promoter advising me about what to do? No, encourage your, your, your think, stable I think the boxers. British Boxing Board of Control, who are the regulatory body, you know, generally, if you own a governing body, you'll have an arm that represents the, yeah. the player. Like we own PDC, Professional Darts yeah, Corporation. Right. There's the PDA, which is the yeah. players' organisation. We own yeah. World Snooker. And there's the WPBSA yeah. that, that represent the players. But so, there's one in boxing. No, but it's kind of like it, it should really come from the regulatory body. Like it would be difficult for me to advise a fighter that I you don't can encourage represent. it. You yeah, can I talk so. about I it. I think so. So the football union, they get every player's contract, so they know at least what every player's earning. So at least the boxers can say, look, you know, to the union, look, am I getting the piss taken out of me? It's like a player when we used to have chats. People go, I heard he's on that. He's the <coughs> high. You go, that never, that wouldn't bother me in the least. Nah. Did it bother you what you thought if somebody was on? No, I was okay once I signed a contract. Yeah, I, I was. Yeah. So but, I, but to sign a contract, I used to go to the union and say, look, what are the other sort of right backs on in the league, defenders on in the league and stuff? Could you do oh, the that? Right backs. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but they were better than you. And they deserve more than those bats and weight. Did I tell you what Phil was on? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I think the bigger thing we have to look towards is aftercare. For fighters, yeah. not 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 medically, but almost like emotion. I was watching that um, 
the Bex documentary the other day, and I saw about his last game at Paris Saint Germain. Yeah. You know, where he was saying about he just broke down into yeah. it. And I thought to myself, must be terrible for you guys and a fighter to all of a sudden, that's gone. Yeah. 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 I know you can go and work in the media and you can get a job in coaching, but most fighters will finish their career and just drift, just drift into yeah. society. People like AJ as well. AJ's just a kid from an estate in Watford. Yeah. He wasn't built for this life of cameras on him all the time, getting out of a car criticism non-stop yeah. like that that's hard to deal with and i think you, your life can become a little bit unenjoyable the the fight against you sick i mean you're talking about sort of aftercare and looking after he's your box mm. he's your man that stage when he got on the, mm. when he was mate. in the ring and he got on the mic and he mm. was you not sitting there thinking i've got to stop this i've got to protect him. i've got to get in there and not, get this mic off look i was i've never seen him like that before mm. and i think the problem is is sometimes you get involved at that point and it can escalate mm. so out of control, yeah. like to a much bigger drama. Yeah. I'm talking about physically. Mm. Like if you go up to him at that point and try and take the mic off him, I know him well enough to know. It's like, yeah. boom, next thing, someone else is coming in. Yeah. Next yeah. thing, yeah. someone yeah. gets chinned and it's like, like you were giving you your business card to Usyk. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 I was just over to him. Are you right, Eric? <laughs> but but it's at that point, you've almost got to, you know, you've got to let him do his thing wow. and yeah. it's like I'm watching going you know because I knew he for nearly a year to that rematch every day of his life he woke up and went to bed dreaming of winning that fight mm. and it was like an implosion and it was just all the pressure that he'd had over the years what I was just talking about there living in that bubble mm. it just all blew up that night and I think it was good for him in a way because I think if you just you're under pressure you're under pressure Sometimes you've got to explode. And yeah, like the press comments after, he broke down in tears. I've never, I couldn't believe it. You know, I'm sitting there and he's talking about losing. And he's just, he's gone. He's like, and I'm like, but I feel like that was a good thing yeah, because the yeah. public get to see the reality of the situation and he can let it out and say, look, you know, and I think that, that, that was difficult to see him like that because he's such a brave faced guy. Yeah. And you talk about that aftercare. Do you think it's important that they get it whilst they're still boxing as well? Because you talk about them yeah. long periods of time. Because prevention is surely better than yeah. cure. And when you do retire, I suppose, you get a lot of opportunities, don't you? But then it can die yeah. down. And a lot so. of them work with mind coaches and stuff like that. And I think I've never really been a massive believer. Like, I believe in sports psychology, but boxing is a really strange sport psychologically. You know, I mean, when you think about it, it doesn't make sense, does it? You are walking out in front of millions of people worldwide to have a fight with another man mm. in the ring. I mean, it's wild, mm. or, or female, wild. And it's very difficult, you know, for people to understand the psychology of a fighter because it, it's, it's a unique yeah. sport. It's not like, you know, going out and having a game of golf or, you know, it's, you've got to be a certain type of animal. And when you get beat, and, and I don't think, they're not normal. People. I mean, anyone that fights, yeah. you can't say they're just a normal member of society because they're trained to fight. Yeah. You know, and it's a lonely sport and the training and everything. And you know, I think. Can I, I, can I throw a name in it just quick? Derek Chisora. Lunatic. <laughs> <laughs> I go banyo. I go to the Russian banyo with him. He's just one of the most um, eccentric men I've ever met in my but, life. But you talk about negotiation. Right? <laughs> so I make Dillian White against Derek Chisora. Right, the first fight. So we're negotiating the money, blah, blah, blah. And I said, look, I want to incentivize you guys on the pay-per-view because I want you to sell the fight for me, right? And Chisora says, I don't want any pay-per-view. Just give me my money. Mm. So I'm like, all right, anyway. So I give him a bit more money, all right? Anyway, we get to the press conference. I'm thinking this is going to be wild because these two, like, they're lunatics. It's going to go off. Mm -hmm. Hopefully there's no violence, yeah. but it's going to be great for the pay-per-view. Mm. So start with Dillian White. I'm going to do this. I'm going to smash you up, blah, blah, blah. This is personal. I turned to Derek, I went, Derek, big fight coming up. He said all this about you. What you got to say? And he went, I ain't saying nothing. I said, what? And he went, you haven't put me on the pay-per-view, man. <laughs> the presser, right? Live, live. And I went, I went, I went, well, this is live. I went, you said you didn't want any pay-per-view money. He went, ah, I'll do now. <laughs> I went, all right, we'll talk about that after. But anyway, we went, no, nah, nothing. Jeez. So I'm like, so they did the face off. And he comes up to me and he goes, um, I said, what are you doing? He went, no, no, you haven't given me any paper. I said, you said you didn't want any. He went, well, he went, give me that watch. <laughs> <laughs> so I, 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 I wrote it. 
I said, what do you mean, give me that watch? He went, give me that watch and I'll sell the fight. So what was it? <laughs> Rolex. <laughs> a real one. Yeah, a real one. <laughs> and he went, I went, no, I said, but I'll tell you what I'll do. I went, this show does 300,000 pay-per-view buys. I'll buy you one of these. Mm. And he went, you got it. They drove down Sky for the gloves are off. Mm. Next thing, Dillian White's thrown a glass at him. <laughs> <laughs> They're rolling around on the floor. He's bit Dillian White on the chest, like the whole thing, you know. And then, and then famously, three weeks later, when we had the press conference, it got real bad. Like they talk about, I know your address. When this fight's over, I'm coming round to wow. see you and all stuff like this. And then Dillian White said that in the presser, and Chisora had this thing. Once the knee started going, wow, you needed to it. evacuate. The <laughs> yeah. so, so they're talking, and he's gone, and, Ch and, and Dillian White's gone, I know where you live, and when this fight's over, don't think this is over. Yeah? And Chisora's gone, like, like this, uh, and I, I've told security behind, I went, be ready. Yeah? Mm. So he's gone, like, I've seen his leg go like this, I'm down the table, and I've, I've looked at my security, I went, I can get ready. Mm. And he's going, you think I'm the, I'm, the, I'm the baddest man? And he's picked up the table. Do you remember? Yes, I remember. He picked up the table yes. and threw it, well, at Dillian White, but actually threw it at me and Adam Smith. <laughs> and there's like a famous thing like this. Yo. He was like, wild. And then the board said, the fight's off. Oh, no. I said, no, no, no. I said, we've just finally had the build up of a lifetime. Yeah. You got... No, fight's off. I said, you've got to have a hearing. So we went to the hearing with the board. And as you can imagine, like, he's 70, he's 80, he's 90. Oh. And I said to Derek, I went, Derek, come in I said and just say you need this fight to provide for your family for you know you're sorry you're a boxer it's just you know so he's like okay stay calm so there's like all these old boys from the board and the board you know Derek Chisora and he starts reading off his rap sheet you know he's like in 2018 you bit the ear of another man at a press conference. In 2019, you spat in Vladimir Klitschko's face like this and Chisora's like sitting there like this and all of a sudden he's going <laughs> I went, stop it here. I said, stop, stop, stop. I said, you can't do this to him. He's supposed to be fighting in two days. So I took him out and he came in. He gave a great speech and we won 4 3 in the, in the hearing. So, and it was one of the best fights I've ever seen. Did he seen. come back in wearing your watch? I gave him the watch. <laughs> <laughs> I him the watch. Done, done about 400,000 and I bought him the watch. Oh, that's good. Yeah. Right, you boxed when you were younger, didn't you? you well, yeah, when I was a kid, yeah. Jesus, yeah. When I was. 11, 12 years of age for a few years, I was a boxing club, as you do when you're younger back in Ireland, keep out of trouble. And my brother was a, my brother had about 50 amateur fights, my younger brother, but I had about four, four fights, four amateur fights, yeah. Is there any footage of them or do we, we haven't no, got it? No, back oh, then. press Jesus. play. <laughs> <laughs> you high, no, yeah, I had a couple of, four fights maybe. And, I was, was it, I was unbeaten. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> same as him. Yeah, yeah, same yeah. As yeah, but we had judges. Fight. We had judges. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I didn't have judges. Yeah. But no, it was great. Obviously, brilliant. When you're younger, the training, loved everything about it, mm. the discipline. Yeah. And again, I think yeah. I agreed. Yeah. These lads going into a ring to fight. I got so a lot of mindset. Yeah. yeah. But I think we we do a lot of work in the community now. I think one of the things lacking in society is driving kids into sport. Like, I feel really passionate about it. Like, and I see my own kids like. It's a, it's a real job to, to make sure they're competing all the time because sport is like the best education. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I was brought up on sport. Like all of everything I learned in life was coming from sport and competing and winning. And I just, I really worry about that next generation just losing interest in sport. And when you see a kid going to a boxing club, like, there's nothing like the it. The coaches are volunteers are brilliant. Oh, it's the coaches. Every night. coaches you remember. Yeah, the, the time they put in for Every night they're there volunteering. No money. I mean, what sort of, you know, in the world we live in today, yeah. you imagine the new generation, you yeah. saying to them, right, Monday to Friday, five till nine, you've got to give your time for nothing mm. for yeah. the community mm -hmm. and the kids. And the government don't support these clubs either, which is, which is yeah. madness. But every kid that goes through a boxing club, you don't really see them get into trouble. Yeah. You know, I see, I see my, my daughter goes twice a week and there's an old boy down there, like you say, he's like in his 80s. And if they just have a little yap between, oi, right, Sophia, stop talking. Everybody down, 20 press-ups wow. now. Yeah, like the yeah, whole yeah. club, oh, oh, yeah. you know, comes down, she does an hour and a half, comes out exhausted, yeah. Mm. Yeah. no phone, nothing. Yeah. You know, gets home, goes to bed. Get rid of all that it. energy, innit? That yeah. energy. Yeah. We yeah. used to do it as part of our football training on like a Thursday when I turned professional mm. with Man City and the guy, if you weren't concentrating, you'd just come and like whack you in wow. the face and he'd be like... <laughs> really? If you mean, well, I think nobody that's a bit true. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. nobody What's his name? Nobody He's in prison now, like, isn't <laughs> <laughs> But I remember being like 90 minutes into a game and like just thinking about things that you used to say to us, like, you've mm. got to stick in, like, mm. don't yeah, be a do wuss. And honestly, I think it's so good for kids, like, mm. so good.
We have got some footage of one of us uh, fighting. Oh. <clears throat> Here we go. Look at me, I'm... <laughs> uh, uh, look at the size of... Look, can I just say... That's heavy weird, obviously. <laughs> Good jab, Ed. Yeah, yeah. Well, you walked onto one, didn't you? I did. Yeah. Good look bit of body that. work. Look, 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 look. Switching it up. Look, Come on. you know what? It was, um... I'm surprised you're not guessing. I am guessing. <laughs> Ed, Ed, I'm not, Ed, I'm not joking. <laughs> like, the second round, like one and a oh, half minutes yeah. into the second round, oh, yeah. gone. Pads are easier than another pad. Oh, yeah. Look at he's got... No. Oh, that leg? Jimmy, you're yeah. pretty decent. Poor pads. Like, uh, Poor pad work. work. Come on, you... Look, he's just trying to hurt him. Keep going, he's out. Come on. Come on, Fergie's here, and you're on. Do it for Fergie, do it for Fergie. <laughs> 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 That's the <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's the best. It's, it's the best the, in yeah. respect of a disciplined child. I trained for six months, so I didn't look like it. What? <laughs> like, I'm not joking, it was but so Wrighty, amazing. What about you and Cara? What, what would you get for you for, for Wrighty hey, versus Cara? Well, I understand that, a fortune. I mean, I often think to myself, oh, no, here we go, <laughs> 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 well, I, I said, I said, and he won't mind me saying, after every big fight, especially with a YouTuber, sometimes Rooney will fire me in a message and go, listen, I'll tell you. And I, I actually you. said to Wayne, did you not see me as Phil Bardsley? Yeah, I know. But, yeah, <laughs> that was in the living room after, yeah. after about eight bottles of red. Yeah. But, but it's like, Wayne Rooney, who, who, you know, went, had a very limited amateur pedigree, but still could fight. Yeah. Wayne Rooney, Training, and I said to him, "Great as well. Imagine the shape you'd get in. You go, you get right back in shape mm. against Jake Paul at Old Trafford. Wow! Right? And that, that's, that's the one, isn't it? Wow! Right. I'm You're like so, I'm on so the overlap. So amazing. If you do that deal, we're in. <laughs> yeah. But we it's all like, think Rooney's coming back for the Birmingham job, but is really it? No, the but I just think, but it's the kind of thing. Like, there's a. I think a lot of people, like in his position, an expert, to get back in shape. I mean, you know, with the training, yeah, like God, it's a, it's a. You talked earlier about I'm a celebrity and stuff like that. It's almost like its own reality experience. Yeah. But for 12 weeks of training, yeah. he would be in unbelievable Beans. shape. Yeah. Yeah. And I'd watch you know, that. But any, anything with football, I, mean, I get asked the question all the time. You know, if there's two footballers, and I, and I know that most footballers follow the boxing. You know, most mm. people watch it, and secretly they'd all love to have a go. Yes. You know, everyone thinks they can fight. Not sure about that. Really. How can you expect Wayne to train that long when he didn't do that when he was a player? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Roy, would you have a go? Would you Would you think about that? If, even like for charity or for something like a? Well, what, what, well it, Wayne's, what Wayne's what Wayne's only? I'm, I'm fifty two now, Gary. I don't know. Shearer, fight you and Shearer. But we should do. We, <laughs> you know what? What an interesting. Again, what an interesting. Yeah. Yeah. You know what you should do? You should do an overlap boxing night for charity. Yeah. Less expenses. You know. And uh, <laughs> <laughs> anything left after the promotion yeah. goes to charity. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, should but, we do that? I mean, I tell you what, it would, it would, you, you'd make you. you know, I'd be up for helping out. We're doing you know something for grassroots in the community. Yes. It would be. Like and and you would be shocked. I mean, the clubs obviously you'd have to probably have to get people that are retired, but you would be shocked how many people would put their name forward to have a go. And it would be the best. Three night. two minute the rounds. Yeah, they'd be queuing. Really? They'd be queuing up to the. I know. God, that'd be <laughs> Knock shit out of it. <laughs> but what you do is you go around the you know the the game and you yeah. say right, who's up for it? The yeah. Charity. Put your name in, and then you get everybody's weights. Yeah. And you do a little draw, and you say right, he's you know he's seventy two oh, kilos. He's I wouldn't. I wouldn't so, be eating for a week. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm getting nervous <laughs> here, man. <laughs> For charity, <laughs> imagine how much money yeah, you make. Do you have to wear the headgear? Yeah. Headgear? You'd know headgear on there. Yeah, you'd have to wear the headgear. Yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> you want headgear? You're sweating, but I think right, let's go back. Let's jump. go back to Tyson Fury because you mm. called him mad before. Mm. You may have seen this clip. You probably will have seen this clip, Eddie. So Eddie Earn, he is a proper southern wanker. <laughs> <laughs> That's fair. Yeah, that's fair. Yeah. He, he said that you tried to sign him mm. earlier in his career, but you just didn't come off. Well, so when he imploded and, and put on all that weight, yeah. mm. he contacted me and he said, look, would you be interested in signing me? And I'm like, Phew. you know, but obviously he'd beaten Klitschko at the time and that win was unbelievable. Um, yes. I, I never yeah. thought he I would have a chance did. in yeah. that fight. Bloody hell. And then he had his problems and then he said, would, would you be interested? So I said, yeah, so come and see me. I was in Monaco at the time. He flew out. I sat down in a boardroom of this hotel. He walked in and I've never seen anything. I mean, he was, he was 26 stone. He was like this, he sat down, oh, couldn't, couldn't he, could hardly talk. Sweating, 
to the floor. Like he's like, I'm gonna come back, you know, and I'm gonna do this, and I'm gonna, and I want four easy fights. Then I'll fight Deontay Wilder. And I was like, look, I can't give you four mm -hmm. easy fights. I said, if you if you have like one or two, but it's all you need. You get back in shape. Yeah. No, no, I've got to do it this way. Blah blah blah. And I looked at him. I thought, I ain't spending the money because I've got to give you all those fights. Look at the state here. I don't even think you'll make it back in the ring. Obviously, he ended up having two fights. Mm. Then he boxed Deontay Wilder, and I would have, you know, I would have <coughs> signed him 100%. But what he did to turn <coughs> that around was unbelievable. Miraculous. Like, I mean, he is, you know, we have our ups and downs, and I don't always believe what he says. But he is, I mean, one, he's hilarious. He's, mm. a, he's a personality in a dying breed of personalities in sport, not just in boxing, yeah. in sport, the way that, you know, science and money has taken over the sport. And... To come back from where he come back from is unbelievable. And you're looking at a guy like, you know, I watched at Home of the Furies, which I thought was brilliant. I'm just looking at this guy, you know, with the back fat and all that, mm. like now. And I'm thinking, how do you like he 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 has he's got better durability over rounds than AJ, yeah. probably Usyk, yeah. uh, Wilder. Yeah, yeah. Like he's a he's a one-off because he's been boxing all his life, and it's just so natural to him. Yeah. And is it not know, a fight? You all right, Gary? <laughs> Still nervous thinking about the other He's worried about who he's going to get drawn against. <laughs> is it not a fight now for, uh, for, oh, for Anthony yeah, Joshua? No, itself? it has is to it... be. No, it has to be a fight. So you think it's going to happen? It has to be. E even, if, I, even if AJ loses to Wilder, mm. even if Fury loses to him. We need to see that. You have to see that fight. Listen, in an ideal world, and I'm obviously biased, I think AJ beats Wilder. Do you honestly believe that, though? I do, 100%. Wilder. But, Wilder. Sorry, Wilder. Sorry. Wilder. Wilder. And listen, I mm. believe he beats Fury. I think he's got the style to do it. But also... He won't beat Fury. We'll see. Well, why, but, would you, why, would you, well, why would you say that on the back of the defeats that he's had? What would you make your Styles make fights. I mean, you have to talk about the defeats that he's had. He's lost to a super slick southpaw mm. that has just got the most... I mean, he's, do you think he has a chance against Fury? He does have a chance, but I think Fury is very big. Like the, 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 the fit, the, and, and also, Fury reads a fight very well. He's got a tremendous boxing IQ. Mm. I mean, he was he was slagging me off on Instagram, all this stuff like that. <laughs> and I looked at <laughs> his Instagram Instagram. story mm. and I thought, <clears throat> he's in Las Vegas. And I know that wallpaper. That's the tower suites at the Wynn, mm. where I stay. And I was in Las Vegas. <laughs> So I've just DM'd him. been for long. <laughs> <laughs> so I just DM'd him and said, you in Vegas? I went, do you fancy a cuppa? Mm. And he's just replied, ha, ha, ha. And I went, no, seriously, you're at the Tower Suites. I'm around the corner. So he goes, uh, yeah, all right. Um, go to the lifts and I'll send my security down. So I walked over to the wind, got to the lifts. I said, I'm downstairs. The security guy come down, brought me up. He opened the door and it was like, Bit awkward. He's like, mm. oh, how are you doing, Tyson? And he's just like, <laughs> hoping me off for the last week. And I sat down and we talked like for an hour about boxing. And he knew everything. everything. He knew all my fighters. He was going through my stable. He was saying, what, you know, and he's, wow. he's a very, very smart guy. For me as well, it's very difficult when I was talking to sign about signing him. With my relationship with AJ, very difficult yeah, to yeah, represent course. both fighters. Course, yeah. Like, it only goes one way, yeah. like in terms of the fallout, you know? Yeah. And like, AJ's a mate. And, yeah. and, you know, but what you Fury's said, gone to I, I, Actually, there, I, I, I know you with AJ in terms of sort of Fury and Andy Joshua, but you've just said then before about the durability mm. of Tyson Fury mm. as just above anything else. Mm. When I watch AJ fight, I always feel like he get, he gas, gasses mm. out, <clears> he gets really tired <throat> towards the end of the fight. Do you not think that'd be a big problem for him? Yeah, I think he used to. I think now he's much better. And people keep talking about the style of AJ. <laughs> You have to understand, when AJ started, like he had no amateur experience. He actually had 40 amateur fights, and that included an Olympic gold medal mm. and a world championship silver. So when he turned pro, he was, he was a novice. Next thing, he's 16 fights in, and he, there was an opportunity to win the world title, and he fought Charles Martin, knocked him out in two rounds. Then he's like, in his 19th fight, he's fighting Klitschko mm. at Wembley in front of... 90,000, and he's still a novice. <clears throat> and, and he says now, openly, he goes, I didn't know what I was doing, so as soon as I hurt someone, I just thought Bam, to myself, shit, it, yeah. get him out of there. And I would just, you know, and then you, you talk yes. about the size of him, yeah. and he's like loading up on shots, and he goes, now he's become more of a complete fighter. Some say not as exciting, I agree. But he's like, at this stage in my career, with all due respect, 
I don't have to be exciting for you. I just need to win. Mm. Yeah. You know, if you look at Vladimir Klitschko, he got knocked out earlier in his career and he changed his style and yeah. dominated the sport. So AJ now is technically much better. His engine's much better. His defence is much better, but probably isn't as aggressive and wild as he used to be. But I think he's just been in those kind of fights. After you get hit by Klitschko like mm. he did and then Ruiz, you go, do you know what, I need to get smarter. Are you shouting at him to be more exciting? No, not AJ. Yeah, no, 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 not him, we just need win. A good no, yeah, yeah. Just to finish on this, so you think that AJ beats Wilder, you think that Fury beats Usyk? Usyk. And then I think they fight. And I think it'll be, you know, be the biggest fight of all time. But you, you just never know if, like, Fury could hang him up. Like, generally, I don't think he really is over the moon to fight Usyk. I don't think he... Be like, Fury? No. Is he all too awkward? For yeah, but he just knows it's a really tough fight. I think Fury wins, and I think he thinks he wins, but he also knows mm. how good Usyk is. Yeah, yeah. But they come up with the money. Yeah. And if they come up with the money, he'll fight. Right. Yeah. But he, he thinks he can beat AJ as well, but he may take that fight and go missing. Yeah. Where, where would Fury AJ be? Would that be Saudi? I mean, this, you know, this is the issue now with the money coming in from the sport, not just in boxing, but in football as well. And, mm. you know, you're probably <clears> making... <throat> Definitely double the money to stage the fight out there. And, you know, when we, first, we were the first ones to do a fight in, in Saudi with Ruiz. And I got loads of stick. Like, you know, you're taking the fight. To... Mm. I said, listen, I'll represent the fighter. You think when I go and have a conversation with a fighter and say, it's 20 million for Wembley or 60 million for Saudi. <laughs> what do you think? I mean, I don't really have a say in the matter. But mm. by the way, I'm choosing Saudi as well. This is the fight game. They're prize fighters. They're not going for 18 holes of golf. What could they make in that big fight? Is that, Which ones? Like, AJ, they'll yeah. make over 100 million each. You know, yeah, wow. if, if, if they go, if, if Usyk, if Fury beats Usyk and AJ beats Wilder, they'll make over 100 million each. Well, yeah. And it would happen, it will happen. Uh, yeah. both, that, that's for that, at that level, yeah. that's yeah. when it starts becoming well. easy. Because it's like, come on, lads, you know. Let's, you, let's not be well, hasty. Come on, Eddie, what, what do you make? <laughs> <laughs> Just a small percentage. Yeah. Yeah. We're going to talk to you about things that have happened in your life. So what, what is your biggest regret? What is the thing that you've done that you thought... Oh, I guess it might have to be not signing Tyson Fury. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't know, really. It's hard to have regrets. Like, I just think, um, you know, I think maybe, you know, we had the Conor Ben Eubank situation. Yes. You learn things about how to deal with things what a little that? bit better. So Conor Ben failed a drugs test mm -hmm. and... Um, we went to the board. I mean, this is an, another issue. Should you, you have been quicker there, do you think? Yeah, but contractually, the board have to make a decision yeah. on whether they sanction the event. Mm. Yeah. So we go to the British Boxing Board of Control, who got the results the same time as us, and we said, look, got an issue here. So they look into it, and they say, we'll let you know. Um, Eubank wants to fight. His scientists and his doctors look into the test. It's like a trace amount. He's passed all his other tests around it. Mm. They look at it and they say, we don't believe this is an issue, but it's on the board. Mm. And the board, three days before the event, pulled the plug. And then it was like, well, why did this go on for four weeks? And that they should have really pulled the plug immediately. And, you know, could we have pulled it contractually? Mm. No, but in hindsight. And that was, a, that was you know... But should you, be, should you be putting a fighter in there who's failed a drug test? No, but that's why contractually leave it to the ball. We can't make the decisions of a hearing. You know, it's a bit like the FA making a decision of, uh, on a disciplinary matter. Mm. But because you know, it's boxing, would you not be protecting your fighter if he's... It was not, it wasn't our fighter. I mean, Chris Eubank Jr. was Wasserman's fighter. They had the information. They looked into it. They said to the board, we're OK to proceed. But still, the board have to make the decision. And contractually, in the contracts, it will say, you know, for this fight to go ahead, the board have to sanction the event. As soon as they pull sanction, the fight's over, right. contractually. So you almost lean on them for a decision. It was difficult for them as well because it was... Another problem is there's different drug testing organisations around the world. We pay for additional testing with VADA mm. and the board use UCAD. Well, he passed it's, all it's his... Is drugs UCAD. a problem? Is drugs a problem? I think drugs boxing? is a problem in all sports. Mm. But any sport, again, we go back to greed and money and anywhere there's an edge for an athlete, they're all they're going to look into it. And, it. and I mean, athletics probably the biggest problem, you know, where it's just like cycling, boxing. But yeah, I, I do think we're now getting a situation, we're investing more money than ever in testing and we're getting more who's adverse we? matron. matron. Okay. Yeah, we have to pay for it. I mean, it's yeah. you know, the board aren't going to pay what, for you it. What, you do spot testing of your fighters? Yes, every fight now. So we have additional random testing because random testing is the key. They, the board will test on the night sometimes. It's a waste of time. Mm. If someone's cheating, they ain't going to test positive on the night. You know, they're testing 
eight weeks out, 10 weeks out, 12 weeks out. And that's what we do now with VADA. So we're doing that more. And we are, we are having more adverse findings. But then people turn around and say, well, Matrim shows are having more adverse findings. Yeah, because we're the only one testing. So we have to make a fighter feel like they're part of a testing program. Yes. Unfortunately, we're going to get more fighters testing positive because we're testing so much more now, and it, which is a good thing. You get so many meetings about it, though, don't you? I don't know if mm, you stayed football. when you yeah, were playing. Yeah. yeah, like I was scared to take paracetamol if I had a headache. That's good, Jill. You know, like, I, and I think fighters need that education because they they're not they're not given that education like a high level footballer yeah. is about. You can't do this. Don't do that. Don't open that. Make sure that's informed sport. Make sure that's batch tested. Do, do we think it's a problem in football? I mean, I never. Th when I was playing, I thought football was clean. Remember just rumours about certain. Uh, Physios and medical staff in Italy, remember? Yeah. I, was, yeah, I remember yeah. we would play a certain Italian teams, and after the game, you're you're absolutely drained. You would look at somebody's player. They looked, looked, yeah. Look as if they could play another 19 mm. minutes. Yeah. We like, are they on something? Yeah. Are yeah, they? Yeah. But of course, it's, it's an interesting one. Proven it. Yeah, Eddie, just a quick one. You're, you're obviously been a successful businessman, but what would you say has been the best thing you've done in business? What would you say is the worst thing you've done in business? A mistake you've made? You know, the mistakes come from in boxing. If you're passionate about something and you really want to make something happen, you've got to remove yourself from that versus the actual fight itself and, and, and the commercial value of a fight. So probably the biggest mistake I made was after Anthony Joshua lost to Ruiz, it was like, oh, Matt Trimmer on the ropes, you know, what's, what's happening here? And I, I was like, we really wanted to bounce back with something. And there was a fight between Vasily Lomachenko, who was mm. like God yeah, yeah. of boxing at that stage, and Luke Campbell who we represented, who was an Olympic gold medalist. Yeah. And I just spent too much money on the fight. You know, I, I wanted to bring Lomachenko to London. Yeah. I, you know, I was a bit in love with him as a fighter, but not really understanding his actual commercial value to the mass audience, which was quite limited. Did very well, sold out the O2, mm -hmm. but the pay-per-view didn't hit well. the numbers and, and we're left with a big hole. But What did you lose on that one? Probably a million quid, you know. But an old man's never, never let me forget about it. But, you know, <laughs> it, 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 it was that your ego then basically taking Yeah, all the I was steps. like, you know, and we were flying in boxing and it was just like, you know, but we don't really make mistakes like that. Mm. Yeah. You know, the way that we've be, built our business is, is solid. Mm. And we don't make errors like that. So when I did, it was like... Was there anyone like, saying to you, Ed, Ed, you sure you want to do this? Limited no, because we were at a stage where it was like, it's on me. You know, so and and to be fair, even going back to probably Frotch Groves mm. at Wembley, which was now I don't know, ten years ago, that was really the passing of the baton between my old man and me, because right. he said to me, "Don't do it at Wembley." He said it was not. He said I did Eubank Watson. The first fight was controversial. I did the rematch at White Hart Lane, and it flopped. Mm. He said, "Just because you think this fight's big, don't go at Wembley. It will be embarrassing." I said, "I just I feel it." on social media, I feel like, and we went on sale and we sold it out in a day, wow. 80,000. And after that, he went, right, you're on your own. Probably the most famous boxing promoter when we all remember, going back years, yeah. is Don King. I mean, what's he like to deal still with? Still going, nightmare. <laughs> nightmare. I mean, absolutely, he's 93. Wow. wow. He's still going. <laughs> you know, and I speak to him every now and again. I mean, he phone, he'll phone me up randomly about a fighter or, you know, he doesn't really have many fighters now, but, you know, Don King, I think ethically, not not good news, but as a promoter, mm. probably one of the greatest mm. of all time. I mean, when he had a show in town, you knew about it. Mm. Like if he had a show in Manchester this weekend, he would be literally driving up and down, you know, everybody in the city centre with a megaphone or flags. Hey, everybody, don't I mean, like old school. Mm. I mean, this was in the days before social media. Yeah. Like my old man says to me, you're you're lucky and you're unlucky in some ways because you're lucky in the fact of you've got you know, million followers on social media, you can interact with this audience like that. Mm. We used to have to go and paste posters on undergrounds, you know, all over London to let people know about our shows. He said, but the downside is I used to finish a show and go, well, that was a great night. Let's go for a curry. Mm. Whereas now you've got to listen to everybody slagging you off about the show, if it was good or bad, you know? So it's like... You could just not read it. No, no, but I'm not very good at that. I'm, try I'm, yeah, yeah. No, I'm trying. I'm, yes. I'm reckon he does secretly. You know? Eddie, we're going to finish with a question about your dad. What's the best bit of advice your dad ever gave you? Um, oh, so much, so much. I think, uh, I think with him it's more about, um, you know, trying to not get complacent. I mean, his whole... Mindset is work, 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 work. Like I had a really, I had a great upbringing, but 
an upbringing that some people don't quite understand, which was just like, you know, he was from Dagenham, from a council estate in Dagenham. I was born just about when he was starting to make money. And he was just petrified of me being what he absolutely hated, which was like Silver Spoon. I mean, he still calls me Silver Spoon Kid to this day. So does everyone else. Yeah, I know, yeah. <laughs> well, I told him, I turned it gold. What do you want me to do? <laughs> <laughs> That's so, funny. But, but out, like, for him, you know, he was just so driven to, like, with me, it was just like, you don't get given anything. So you work, 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 work. Yeah. And, and that's, that's his mentality. And, you know, everything for us was built around sport. Like, my whole, the way he brought me up was just, we, we would play everything. Yeah. You know, we, we'd, he'd be bowling full pelt with a hard ball at me at 12. I played county cricket till I was, like, 17. We would, he would take me to football and I was... Like I thought I could play, and he would, but he was brutal with it, you know. And it was everything was winning, mm. winning, winning, winning. Never, how'd you go, boy? You know, he would go to me. He'd come to watch me play football, and I'd come off. I'd go, well, because he's my hero. Mm. You know what I mean? What do you think, Dad? Oh, Jesus Christ, you are so slow. <laughs> He'd go, you turn like an oil tanker. You, I go, yeah, but what do you, you know, useless. Those were drinking useless, bell. You know? <laughs> yeah. Seriously, Ed. Yeah, useless. But cricket the same. How'd you get something? Oh, got six, six runs. Six runs? Come on, boy. What's the matter with you? you know, and, what about and you was, with your girls? What are you like with your girls? Probably the same, but I think it's a bit... I think the world's changed a lot. You know, I go and watch... I was running the line for my daughter's team last week, and, like, it's now like they had, they had this period or this Sunday where no-one was allowed to say anything from the side, mm. you know? Mm. And it's like, it's a silent game or something like that. I'm like, what's that? <laughs> and, like, my, I think, obviously, Bias, she's one of the best players in the team. Mm. But last Sunday, she was started as sub because she played the last three matches... The whole games, and they wanted to give other people a chance. Get it, but not really. Mm. You know what I mean? Like, and I'm trying to adapt that. My, I think that's right. But like, how I was brought up was, don't be daft. You got your best team on, and yeah. make sure you win. And I think you see that a lot with kids that have successful parents. It's actually quite difficult. Don't get me wrong. You got get a good start and all that kind of stuff. But if you're if you're actually a competitor, mm. it's like Lampard. You know, he was at my school. He was the year above me, and he would, I would watch him every night, his old man would take him over the field and they would do drills, they would do, you know, and, and I couldn't believe it, you know. And when he left, like, he's a big inspiration to me because when he left school and went to West Ham, he got so much stick, um, everyone yeah. saying, yeah. oh, he's Frank's, he's Frank's son, yeah. Harry's his yeah. uncle, yeah. like, you know, it's a joke. And now, with all due respect to his dad, who even knows about that his dad used to play yeah. football? Yeah. So, like, people like Lampard, you know, I think he's amazing mm. what he's done. Like, Which he's, team do you support? Who's your... Well, we, we owned Leighton Orient, which was, you know, <laughs> 15 years of our life that was, was brilliant, really. But I never really supported a team, but someone owed my dad some money once <laughs> and <laughs> they couldn't pay him. So instead, they gave him season ticket at Tottenham. Mm. So I ended up going down there for most of my years. But that was <laughs> like Gaza. Klinsman, Lineker. L yeah, Lineker coming towards the end, but like all of you know, Justin Edinburgh, who obviously yeah. you know was at Orient, Austin, Orient coach yeah. as well, Dean Austin, Popescu, Torsvale, you know, probably you know just man, you're kind of, but yeah, Tottenham, Tottenham for four or five years, but then Orient, Orient was always my old man's team, yeah, and it was it was great, great. So you, you, you your dad owned it or you owned it? <laughs> no, my old man did. Yeah, okay. he he brought, he bought the club when we were sixteen. Was he a better owner than Simon, Simon Jordan? Cool. <laughs> <laughs> He's, he's, he's a better a lot of things. <laughs> well, that's a good place to finish. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He's stuck to football in the end. Uh, well done. Thanks very much for no coming worries. on. Really enjoyed that. And thanks, Ian, Roy, Jill and Cara. And we'll see you again next right. time. Yeah, we've got to get a picture with Ed. Look at the fucking size of Eddie, to fuck's sake. I'm going to go and put a black jumper on.